In today's video, we're going to be installing the Speed Factory Race Cam and adding some racing additives engine treatment. Let's go ahead and get started with this process. Uh, you're probably wondering why I'm re-uploading this video for the second time. Um, it's because in the first video, I actually made a mistake. I put the wrong picture on the screen because I have a folder full of pictures on torque specs. So this is just a re-uploaded video with the proper torque specs. And no, I didn't torque my engine down with those specs. Uh, I just put the wrong picture in the editing. Sorry about that. So huge shout out to the subscriber who actually caught my mistake. And this is why I like whenever you guys comment things and actually watch the videos because I didn't notice that mistake until they pointed it out. So um, I'm going to go ahead and re-edit it and here's the video. So enjoy. What's going on everybody? Today we're going to be installing the Speed Factory Street Savage Cam. Um, I will have a link in the description for this cam. And in the previous video before this one, we are placed all of these valve springs and retainers with Brian Crower uh, springs and retainers because it is required to have upgraded springs and retainers to run this camshaft. So if you haven't seen that video, there will be a link in the description. Next thing we're going to do is obviously pull this camshaft out, um, swap that cam seal over because I just recently replaced that cam seal. If you haven't replaced your cam seal recently and you're about to do this, make sure to do it because uh, those cam seals, when they start leaking, it just makes a huge mess. But I'm going to go ahead and read some of this stuff for you here. Speed Factory racing camshafts are designed and manufactured using new chill cast blanks for superior wear characteristics and to eliminate any possible issues with post heat treatments. Upgraded valve springs are required. For optimal results, camshaft must be degreed with an adjustable cam gear. Special note, an adjustable cam gear is necessary to achieve correct camshaft timing in a D16Y8. This is a D16Y8 head. so. In order to do that, we have to put the AEM cam gear on, which I do have, and we'll advance it two to four degrees on the cam gear. Dyno tuning to achieve optimal results with your setup is highly recommended. Results will vary based on quality. Improperly installed camshafts can cause catastrophic damage. High performance camshafts put greater stress on valve train components, which will cause higher wear rates. Make sure followers are in good condition and any scuffing or scoring will result in accelerated lobe and rocker wear. Never use an impact gun to install a cam gear. Use a properly calibrated torque wrench and torque cam gear to 23 foot pounds using a small drop of removable thread locker blue Loctite, which I do have. We'll have to make sure that the valve lash is done uh, properly and it has all the intake valve lash 0.007 to 0.009. Exhaust is 0.009 to 0.011, so 9 to 11. All right, all the spots that they want you to check for are like these spots, which they look really good um, all the way through. You're gonna wanna make sure there's no like, I don't know, high spots, I guess. Um, I don't have a bad one to show you, but I've seen them go bad. These all look pretty good. They got your normal wear and tear on them. So that's good, and flip this over. All right, this is also where they want you to check, which the wear looks pretty normal on this one. Here's the VTEC, and these are the low side of the cam. So these will be the non-VTEC. But they all look like they're in really good shape. So we're good to go there. Now I will be using this Zinc Plus. Um, I'll be using this and Best Lines engine treatment because that stuff's really good for this kind of thing but i'll be using this and some permatext ultra slick assembly lube um, i'll just be putting it on everything on here and on the camshaft prior to putting it in so i'm going to go ahead and get started this is also another important area you need to make a note of um, these areas definitely need checked to make sure there's not any serious scarring or pitting because that can ruin the camshaft. So I figured I would tell you that before we get any farther. Now even though the seal is new, I like to use some black gasket maker around it inside and out. That way it just doesn't leak. And I don't go light with the assembly lube. I put it on pretty thick 
just because why not? Now I'm gonna add some racing additives. If you guys wanna get some of this stuff, the formerly known as Best Line Racing, same great product, different name. Um, if you wanna get some of this, there will be a link in the description to get 20% off your entire purchase price. I highly recommend it. This stuff is up there with AMS oil. It's really, really good stuff. Now this stuff is a high zinc additive. I'm gonna be applying this as well. I know this may seem like overkill to most of you, but better safe than sorry. And this stuff I know works really well too. All right, now we're going to add the rocker seat. All right, so it's all torqued down. Good thing to do is to make sure it's not binded up before torquing. Um, I've seen people snap camshafts in half doing that. But now I'm gonna show you the AEM cam gear and show you the timing marks. Um, this is a Z6 style cam gear. It's a true time. And if you look really closely, there's a zero and a long line. And if you can see that, we are over two small lines, which is two degrees for each small line. So we're at four degrees um, advanced on the timing. Now we can go retarded on the timing or advanced, but in my experience, the advancing it makes it better. But I could be wrong. We'll just see how it runs, but I'm gonna go ahead and install this and torque the bolt down to 23 foot pounds. Now that we've got the cam gear on, we have to do valve lash while the engine is cold. So I'm gonna go 0.007 on intake and 0.009 on exhaust. All right, now to do valve lash is pretty easy. Um, the engine does have to be cold and I'm gonna show you the best I can. These are the intake valves for cylinder one. Um, you can see they're pretty loose because if you can see back in here, the lobe that it's gonna be riding on are these two center ones this one right here and the other side now you want those pointing downward to where the triangle looking part is down so you're on the flat flatter side of the cam we're gonna have it at point zero zero seven and as you can see there it's way too loose this thing would chatter like really loud so we'll check this one super loose as well so I'll show you how to adjust it now they do make a special tool for this but I'll just be using a 10 millimeter wrench and a flathead and we'll basically just loosen it up just like that then we will take the 0.07 feeler gauge and we'll tighten it down until it starts having some grab. That's like perfect. It has a little bit of bite, but not too much. So now we will hold this in place and then tighten it up. And 
and make sure it's still biting, which it is. So we'll just go ahead and do that on all the intake side. And then on the exhaust side, we'll do the same, but it'll be 0 0.009 all the way on the exhaust side. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. All right, so I got all the valve lash adjusted and I poured more assembly lube directly onto the lobes and everything's good. I timed it, got it put at top dead center. As you can see the single mark there and it is lined up perfectly. So um, basically at this point, we're gonna go ahead and put the valve cover back on, put the distributor on and uh, just bolt it all down. We can set ignition timing here in a little bit but after we start it up, we have to let it idle, um, idle at 2,500 RPM for like at least five minutes. So I'll go into Han data and I'll just bump the idle up until we're sitting right around 20, 2,000 to 2,500 RPM. And uh, that'll let everything seat into place. And then we'll take it out on the highway, not beating on it, just driving it kind of normal to break it in, bring it home, drain the oil out and put fresh oil and we should be good to go. So now we're gonna go fire it up. We got everything fixed. We fixed the supercharger pulley. The lower idler pulley needed raised up so we could put more tension on it. And now it's working. So we're gonna go ahead and fire it up, raise the idle up to 2000, I'm gonna say 2000, and then uh, we'll let it idle for about five minutes and then we'll take it out on the highway. As you can see, I'm idling at 2500 RPM. I've adjusted everything on Han Data. Show you the display. So now we got to do that for about four more minutes and uh, then we'll be ready to take it out. All right, so there it is with the Speed Factory race cam and the AEM cam gear adjusted. It actually runs pretty much like stock sounds real nice real smooth no real chatter from the valve train like most race cams you got all that chatter so I really like how it sounds obviously the performance is more important than anything but uh see the air fuel ratios it will need an adjustment a retune for this cam because everything will be off but those are pretty close to the air fuel ratios I had on the stock Y8 cam and the vacuum isn't much different than factory at 850 to 900 rpm so that's really good so we're gonna go out take it on the highway we can't beat on it yet we've got to um, just kind of cruise with it and then uh, we'll come back and we'll go over some more all right so we're taking it down the street uh, to see how it does uh, my tuner michael which his information will be in the description. He told me to just take it on the highway, uh, just kind of cruise for a couple minutes at highway speeds, but no getting on it. Nothing crazy yet, because we got to let the cam seat, uh, basically make its new home. And then we will drain the oil, and then we'll be good to go. So we're right now just cruising, and the air fuels seem pretty decent so far. Um, they're about the normal air fuel ratio, so. I really like this cam. Most cams I've already, I've had, they didn't have a, a good drivability. Like my Jasma cam I had, it was very bucky when you're just trying to drive normal. This one seems just to want to accelerate very easily. Like I'm barely giving it gas and it just wants to go. So we're gonna get up to some highway speeds and just kind of cruise and see how it does. But air fuels are, 14s, 15s, just cruising. So we're just going to see how it goes. So far, it's really easy to speed. Like, I'm barely on the gas pedal and just, it just wants to go. So I'm having to be like really light in fourth gear. We'll go fifth gear and see how it does. solid. But we're going to keep doing this for a couple minutes and then uh, we'll get back 
right, so we're back at the house. It runs awesome. I let it idle for about five minutes after we got back, and uh, it's running really good. I didn't hear any abnormal noises. The valve lash sounds good still, and you can even ask him. We yeah. got on it, and it pulled pretty, it pretty decent. Pretty through the seat, though. Um, right here, you can kind of see it hit 8.4 PSI at air fuel ratios at 1254 to 1, which is really good. And that was at 7400 RPM. I didn't try taking it very hard. I just wanted to do a light get on it, and it just set us back in the seat pretty good. So uh, it's running awesome. I am definitely impressed with the Speed Factory cam. It does need a retune, so we're going to get it retuned soon. Um, next thing we are going to be doing is getting the traction bar installed in another video but it's running it's running awesome even with the long gear transmission it still set us in our seat pretty okay. good and i wasn't even really trying hard i just kind of gave it gas i didn't downshift or anything crazy um so i'm i think it's gonna be really good in, on the dyno because last time we took the dyno it was at like what 182 wheel horsepower consistently and uh that was at 6.5 psi on the supercharger now we are at 8 to 10 range. It really just depends on how much tension I have on the belt, um, on the how much boost we're pushing. So we got the AEM True Time cam gear. This is a Z6 cam gear. It's not the actual one for the Y8, but I do plan on getting a Z6 head, so it's not a big deal. We did have to uh, advance it 2 degrees on timing, or 4 degrees, 2 notches, so it is 4 degrees. But it runs awesome. The idle is so smooth. It just drives like it's stock still until you give it gas. Then it's it's a whole nother car after you do that. But uh, I'm really happy with it. Michael's going to do his tuning magic. If any of you guys are interested in Michael's tunes, definitely hit him up. His information will be in my description. Um, huge shout out to Speed Factory for making an awesome product. We got the Brian Crower Springs and Retainers, Speed Factory Cam, AEM True Time Cam Gear, Jackson Racing Supercharger, um, the head is not ported or anything like that the supercharger is but not the head the block is stock internals uh, transmission stock eight pound flywheel stage four racing clutch uh, six puck stage four racing clutch and uh, eventually we're going to be throwing in this z6 we're building it has the block guard and uh it'll have the max peating rods which stay tuned to the channel guys because we'll be giving away some forged max peating rods d16 rods um so huge shout out to Max Peating for doing that. And uh, obviously I gotta give my sponsor Best Line a shout out as well because they make an awesome product which we did put in here as well. Uh, we gotta change the oil out, which I'll do that tomorrow. And uh, then we'll put some more Best Line in it and stuff like that. But it's running amazing. I'm super happy with it. So if you follow these instructions in this video, you should be, should be good to go. This thing just started up and ran great. Um, since we started it, it's been running awesome. But I'm going to go ahead and get off here. I have quite a mess to clean up. I hope this video helps someone out there. Um, definitely subscribe and stay tuned for more because we will have way more coming. Next is to do that uh, traction bar, take it back to the dyno, and yeah. then to the track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't wait. So we're definitely getting it back at the track as soon as possible, guys. So um, I'll see you guys in the next one. As I like to say, God bless, stay safe, stay awesome.